We have a viewer asking if they're, those are a type of glass sponge. Yeah, so they actually are. Um, uh, they are in uh, ferret, they are frayed sponges. So um, there are lots of different types of frayed sponges. If you look on our ID guide, Okeanos Explorers, uh, Benthic Guide, um, and you go look down in the periphera or sponges, uh, and you look in Faraday, um, you will see the types of sponges that we're seeing here. Uh, I have an ID down to a species, uh, but I think we would need to get a closer look or um, to get down to the species identification. But uh, we do know the the family. Uh, viewers asking if anything has ever swam or ran into Hercules. I've definitely seen some fish, um, <laughs> even um, octopuses kind of crawl on board <laughs> the porch there sometimes. I know Dan has more to say on that, but I think this terrain might be a little complicated right now. Yeah. Yeah, try not to dust it. I keep dusting it. A lot of sediment on the rocks, so. I don't know if that was a. Okay, I'm done. Three tracks. Are you going to keep coming towards me? Yeah, you can okay. come up a bit there. Thank you. Put her in light will help. Uh, viewers commenting that there was a sea cucumber hanging out on the porch for most of a dive recently. <laughs> uh, just to say hello to Jonathan. Elbow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Squat lobsters hitchhiking rides, someone else said. Yeah, we've had quite a few hitchhikers. Um, I think basket stars. Uh, I think, what was it, Dan, a little green crab that you had found hiding on Hercules after oh, we yeah. brought it on deck last time, yeah. uh, last expedition. Oh, wow. Yeah. Was I, he okay? Yeah, it was still alive, and uh, we all got a, a good look at it and then sent it back home, uh, <laughs> back home to, to the deep sea. I, don't, I mean, I don't know how it got onto Hercules and how Dan even spotted it. It was so small. What's that? Oh, I'm just getting hit by the float, so I'm coming up a couple of meters. Roger, yeah. I need to probably come up. We're getting a bit closer. Yeah. Bridge, bridge nav, 10 meters, uh, zero 090. Zero. Well, I think you're... Affirmative. She's, she's good there. Chris breaks up as she just comes up a bit. Okay, I'll let the move in. I want to get off a little bit anyway before we start cruising south. Right. It. She can just see over the top there, so. Yeah, it's nice to be 10 meters off, then we can pop it down to the bottom again. When we were in the octopus garden, uh, Octopus would get on the vehicle, and we couldn't get them off. It was really that was a new experience. <laughs> How did the pumpkins fare when they came back up from yesterday's dive? So they, I don't think they didn't explode like we wanted. Um, yeah. I think Ollie, okay. has, Ollie has a good answer for what happened. Well, well, that's when we need the soundboard, uh, Chris. <laughs> we would, that would definitely be a womp womp. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the I the one thing. Uh, we need to do some tether. Sorry. Uh, we need yeah, to do some tether it. management here. Okay. Yeah. We'll pause that's for comms. One, my heading flipped around. Yeah. So why don't you come up? We'll stretch it out up. I'll come up too because it's very okay. dusty. And we'll take those turns out. 
You can come up quite fast now. Sorry, I saw it was getting ready to twist over on itself there. Okay, that should do it. You should be able to uh, come clockwise. Um, so the ones on the porch, somebody said they seemed to get harder. I didn't notice that. They looked totally fine, like perfectly fine. Um, but I didn't look at the ones that were in the box. And apparently uh, Madison said that the stem got kind of like squished in. The, those were the smaller, like more decorative pumpkins. Right, right. But the big, like the the bigger ones that were like this size, were those were like totally fine. Undamaged. Yeah, I have a I have a video. I think one of the scientists on board the ship speculated that their water had, water had penetrated the pumpkins. Sure. They're porous, and once the oh, water got right inside, right. it essentially yeah. equalized the yes, pressure one more. and one more. Okay. kept it yeah. from. Imploding. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So these, this is, these are the big ones. I didn't uh, see the other little ones, but these oh, yeah. are after. They are undamaged. Yeah, they were wet. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe probably salty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pickled pumpkins. Yeah. <laughs> they are definitely pickled. Uh, somebody's asking, uh, with all of this amazing basalt you guys are imaging, is there a geologist on board? There you go. Uh, I think Larry is a geophysicist. Oh. Uh, but lagging. He knows a lot about yeah. the geological features. Yeah. And then we also have Dr. Uh, Christy oh, Mitchell, right. who is a so. biogeochemist bio who knows yeah, a lot about... I'm with that picture. Um, but not really, a, yeah, not really a full-fledged geologist. Look, uh, west? Yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah. Okay, Dr. Chris Ballard has move. his degree in yeah. geology. Yeah. It's yeah. His, uh, okay. his specialty is, is geology, so two he's one. And you're right, Larry is another one. But yeah. uh, uh, Larry's specialty is uh, the geology of okay, the we'll oceans. Drop back down. And under the oceans. He, that's what yeah. he teaches at University yeah. of uh, Rhode Island. Oh, excuse me, University of New Hampshire. Goodness. I keep getting that wrong. Larry uh, Meyer is a professor at, uh, and a, a department head at the University of New Hampshire. Yeah, Dr. Ballard, he had quite a, a wide interest uh, yeah. in ocean sciences. It's a pretty remarkable um, that he was able to be so interdisciplinary, um, but also focus on geology. And So yeah, it's been a real treat to have him when he comes up in the van to yeah. explain. It, it definitely. really is. He's a, an extraordinary individual and just absolutely brilliant. But he was in uh, college as a geolo geology student when plate tectonics uh, appeared and became understood and accepted as the actual way the Earth's uh, plates moved, the cause of earthquakes, the, the, the reason behind the way that mountains form and continents move. Uh, Bob said that was one of the most exciting moments he remembers it during his college years was that remarkable discovery. Yeah, I highly recommend uh, this song on YouTube. Uh, by the Amoeba people called, uh, I think it's the Alfred Wagner song that I play for my kids every year. <laughs> and it tells the story of Alfred Wagner and, and how he wasn't proven correct until after he had passed away. So it's it's a fun song, but I, I warn you, it will get stuck in your head. <laughs> what, is, what is it? <laughs> so it's like, a, it's like a song that I play for my kids about Alfred Wagner. Uh -huh. um, and it talks about um, continental drift. <laughs> ah, okay. And yeah, it's really silly, and it it will get stuck in your head. You gotcha. have been warned. <laughs> we we can look for it later during dinner. I know. And then you will hate me. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> I I, ha I highly doubt that, but it probably <laughs> will get stuck in my head. <laughs> yeah, it's impossible to hate Ale. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Just so you know, most of the people on this boat are somewhere on the spectrum, so if you hum like three bars of that song, we'll all be walking around singing it for like three days.
didn't starting realize we were so high up there. And these are starting to look oh, similar to the. These are the so basalts. cool. Yeah. Highlights. <laughs> there's the. Uh, Pizza box. There's the sand line for Jonathan. Right, this this might be worth calling Jonathan for. Uh, Jonathan, if you're listening. No, he's not. He's, he's in. Uh, Let's see, I'll just send the WhatsApp thing. Oh, he just yeah, wanted to go up and down and then find Well, I think he line. said he wanted to change to some kind of mode. Oh, yeah. But it, you're right. He was looking for that sand line. Yeah. yeah. That ties in his model to... I feel like we've done this model already. Yeah. In fact, I saw it sitting, sitting on the printer this morning. <laughs> well, let, let's get he said he said if we see columbia basalt let's uh, call him so I, I did so you got the data lab data lab now he's now he's sitting in the mess hall so of the galley lounge lounge now Hey, Maddie, can you get Jonathan and send him up here? Yup. Yeah. These are uh, catastrophic columns. They're not. They're not tall and straight. <laughs> yeah, they're a bit confused. Uh, somebody sent a link to a song, but no, that's not it. How exciting. Uh, and so somebody commented, more pizza boxes. This is a long time viewer. <laughs> They've been keeping up with our, our watch. And somebody else sent another link. Yes, the Continental Drift song by the Amoeba people is it. So this has got everything. It's got pizza boxes over there on the right. It's got broken columns. It's got curved columns. It's got straight columns. All in one. Does the... Oh, we're off of Norbit track. Yep. yep. Well, officially we hidden. We can fix that, by the way. Oh, look well, at the well, little ones down at the base. Yeah, no, that's just, it's just... Uh, it's every kind of columbia basalt you want all in one spot so can we just um well how how does rov feel here do we feel safe and secure for our atalanta-ness yeah we're in a we're in a perfect spot i just been uh this nice, is my nice uh second bottom. or third trip down to the bottom and then kind of floating up and what's our delta from atalanta right now standoff is right at our rated 20 meters so um, let me, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off time lapsing. Roger. And figure out why I don't have control of standby. L I would like to just, uh, go through, let's test, just do, let's do some lighting flips, see what it looks like with, uh, Atalanta and the backscatter conditions right here. Um, and evaluate. How right now I only have the this. mids, which were those, and the uppers. But you're going to have that Atlanta shadow there. Yeah, look at the shadow. Yeah, yeah. The shadow yeah, I like that, that though. Oh, wow. That is eerie. All right, so. So this is with the mids and uppers off? That's all the Herx lights turned off. Wow, that looks awesome. Slightly, so I don't I'm, get hit. I'm coming down. So this is going to take okay. me probably... Mm, 10 minutes or so to get reset up on my computers to switch modes. Jonathan, we're here for you. Um, I would love to see if Atalanta, as, to get as close, Atalanta as close as possible to the wall. That's about it right there. If we get any closer, uh, the tether's going to be smacking us. So we don't have a current to blow it out, off okay. the, out of the way. And we can't tilt the lights down. Not yet. Not yet. 
Um, I can try moving. Let me see if I move to the left a little if we get that tether out of our face. But as long as All the right, tether's in our face there, we can't. Uh, we'll get it tangled up and then we'll be in trouble. There's also a slight overhang above us yeah. as I came down, so moving closer. Oops. I took the wrong computer. Uh, this will, in, a, in effect, move me closer to Atlanta's light pole there. But yeah, you see that tether, that float smacking Atlanta. Blame. I need. To, who do I need to blame? I need to blame. Can you uh, bring your head to the right a little bit? How's that look? Yeah, yeah Dan, I think uh, ROV, ROV to you to try to get that light as pretty as possible. How about right. that? Roger. You want me to come right more? Yeah, if you can try and write it up, light it up on the right side of me here, and I can turn my head a little, see how that looks. Just Look as uh, yeah, try well, that. See what happens. Still have that shadow. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay, what happens if you come down a few meters on that heading? I'm going to let's assign a master ten dot one dot. <sighs> One of the viewers says it looks like a f uh, full moon glow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Want me to keep coming? Bye. Uh, hold that, I'll just move over here into the light pool, see how it looks. Looks like a giant shadow to me. <laughs> Spooky. <gasps> That's my favorite movie. No FSOP control on the other one. Hmm. And no way to get Atalanta light a little bit more northerly or uh, upperly on the rocks. Um, I'm going to un. Let me let me switch over to the yeah, uh, OBS and un. Un. Uh, you know what I mean. Stand by. Move a little closer, Chris. Okay. Ten meters. See yep. what happens. Bridge, bridge now. If you hit the wall, if you hit the wall, we're too close. Right. If there's if Atalanta's a smear, then we know we went too far. <laughs> Josh, if you're listening, this is not my fault. <laughs> Grease stain on the cliff side, Bluey. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need you to sign this statement here. That yeah. Says, like, <laughs> hey, he was on SPL. It's, it's logged. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's made out of uh, titanium and stainless say. steel. You can't break it. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Famous last words. Yeah. Someone knock on wood. Something about an unstoppable force and a an immovable object. <laughs> I think. Sharp rocks. What yeah. could possibly go yeah, wrong? Right. <laughs> well, we know if we move the ship ten meters, Atlanta will move like five, maybe long enough to do or, the shot. Or thirty. We I mean the way things are going. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's always that. <laughs> This is all great comfort to Raya, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it is uh, that situation where you can't come up because it's an overhanging cliff. So. Okay. Oops, wrong computer. <laughs> People are writing in lyrics to the Alfred Wagner song. <laughs> it appears they found it. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'll send me the link and I'll stick it onto my Lipton's kids' playlist. Minus.
Okay. I think so. so we are at F8, 37 degrees, 160 ISO, 64,000. If there's any camera geeks out here, one of the remarkable things is just how high the ISO is on these cameras despite being low light. You said 64,000? Yeah. That's it's a, insane. It's still an incredible image yeah. coming out of this. This is also fake 64 right now. Right. I've got to... And there's yeah, no, no noise on that? Oh, there's some noise, okay. but it's not uh, It's not uh, unreasonable. Gotcha. That's Jonathan, amazing. I grew I grew up uh, developing film, making prints, and Tri-X 400 uh, ASA was, you know, one of the fastest films available, and even it was a little grainy, and you just said this is 64,000. That's correct. Extraordinary. Uh, yeah, right we'll here. actually Chris. record at about uh, ISO 25.4. Yeah, so closer, not quite as extreme, but it still is quite the remarkable sensor, um, which is uh, why, which is by design for this system, because uh, in in the darkness like this, you you bring all of your light with you, and especially when you're trying to film with something like Atalanta as an off light. Uh, are you positioned such that you might be able to do the full uh, craft arm spread? See if we can get a little bit of side lighting action on this. Well, I have all the ROV lights off, so. Uh, yeah, like the starboard craft arm. Uh, Extend it out so that we can. That's going to be a big spotlight in front of me like that. Well, that's quite ugly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any of the ROV lights are going to be like that. Then. Let's try the Ford right. Fords. Let's see, uppers. Yeah. There, there's a lot of uh, debris in the water here. There is quite a bit. Okay. And um the mids. Yeah, we've got a bunch of that, and it's pretty ugly with the debris. I think so here. I think but what I'm what I'm interested in here is uh, first at this angle. Um, yeah, I'm at this angle just so you don't see uh, the shadow. Oh, I still like it. Yeah. So maybe, can you turn um, about 20 degrees to the left? If I turn to my left, you'll see a shadow. You can see it already in the stereo Can we back camera. up the ROV in relation to the Atalanta? We'll get rid of the shadow. But lateraling kind of along the wall. Yeah, I've been sneaking back Oh there. yeah, that's good. Sneaking back Oh there. yeah, oh yeah. Oh, I like that. I'm not sure what we can do except come up. So, he, he, and um, would it be possible to command a ship move that follows the same angle of the wall, and essentially we just crawl with Atalanta, so like Atalanta's lighting like this, I'm making hand gestures behind you, Atalanta's lighting like this, the ship move starts dragging Atalanta this way, and the ROV matches that speed. That would look extraordinary. You want to basically keep this view and move the ROV forward? Yep. Roger. And Atalanta. All right. And then maybe as you start going forward across the period of uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes of that move, once we get going, slowly lift the ROV up. And uh, so we get more and more detail of the uh, columnar basalt formation next to us. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if you're going to get 10 or 15 minutes of it. Maybe it does. The feature doesn't go on that far. It's basically what you see here in the light pool. All right. Getting pretty well, close. Here we are. Let's right. roll with it. And yeah, we're we're really close. So. Okay, Chris. Let's do a move. Uh, that way, that takes us off the wall a little bit. South and off the wall a little bit. All right. Uh, no, north and off the wall. Oh, north. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's get some basalt samples. Can you, uh, Taylor Ann, could you please? Yeah, I would say 030. Uh, zero the commanding camera. 045 yeah. uh, at least, sorry. 045 at least, okay, Roger. Yeah. Bridge, bridge nav. The commanding uh, camera will be 210. Two yeah, maybe. The commanding zero, camera six, will be zero. what? Sorry about that. 212. 212. Yeah. Uh, Let's do 060. I'll move away from the wall. We're getting Bridge, we're, we're change, too close. The, change the bearing to 060. The problem is it's overhanging, Thank you, right? so the wire is a lot closer than we're actually seeing 
on the sonar, so we could be, you know, we're in danger of touching the wire on the wall. The cameras up there are just temporarily yeah. frozen while I change resolutions. Okay, they're back online. Wow. Right. That looks really cool with Atalanta there. I really actually like the vision with Atalanta in the frame. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, I like it too. I'm worried about the cable touching the wall now. Oh. So we're gonna. We're moving it off a bit. We're gonna move it, move it off a bit. I'd say as a goal, if you can keep it, uh, Atalanta in the frame like that, um, I think we'll just have to call this a feature, not a bug. Um, yeah. No, I'm gonna. And it'll follow the light pool here as Atalanta moves. And if you see particles start to appear in front of us, that means the cable's rubbing the wall. Oh, no. Curl. So we're doing cinema things, not photogrammetry things right Correct. now? Correct. Yep. Right. Action equals rec. Rec equals start. Ah. Control rec. You moving? Are you? The view out of the starboard cam kind of looks like we're looking through a submersible window when you can see the dome. <laughs> oh, yeah. So somebody was asking what the song was that Jonathan was humming. It is the original theme to Jurassic Park. <laughs> That's uh, also asking the ship for a starboard move, which is uh, not their best side either. Okay, I'm slowly, just slowly creeping ahead here. Yeah. Atalanta hasn't even really started to move yet. No, you're going to have to plug in a couple moves there on that heading. We have a question about the biology aboard. We're uh, not really doing much biology except observing. We're not collecting. Um, you should note that the uh, port camera is frozen uh, by, by intent. Um, Maybe while we're waiting for this ship move, uh, can you gracefully dance that ROV up the wall? Channel your inner. You want to plug in another move, Chris? Zero six zero. Bridge, bridge nav, ten meters, zero six zero. Um, and you can try actually backing away to reveal that Atalanta is what's bobbing up and down. Yeah, can do. I, do, I do. I do like a reveal. Do you like a reveal? Oh gosh, I love it when the cameras are all behaving. It's a really good day, everyone. A little more, how about a little bit more of a reveal, counter a little bit to the right so that we can see Atalanta's glory. There you go. I find it helpful if you hum some dramatic music while making art. It does help set the mood. I've come up quite a bit there. You want me to come up? Uh, no, I'm gonna Sorry. chase it back down into the light here. All right, and this is just a fantastic uh, uh, speed to be running at. I appreciate your your candor here. It's the wrong word. Uh, should we do the next move north? You think we got enough off? Yeah. Alright. Uh, yeah. I don't know about north, but can, uh, 
whatever is parallel there to the wall. I think it's more or less north, looking at our track. Uh, yeah, all right. I think zero, zero. four or five is. Uh, yeah, no, somewhere yeah. between north and like zero, zero four it, five. It looks like zero two zero is the strike of the wall. Roger. So maybe I'll just go parallel to that because we're gonna have a little bit of swing off still. Yep, that's fine. We'll run out of wall here. Two zero zero two zero. What happened there? Uh, I just darkened up the image for a second there. I need more light. Um, come up a bit. Okay. That should do it. Okay. Spring heart back in the light pool here. You want more? Um, no, I'm trying to fly into the light pool. Okay. I think, um, I'm not sure if we can replicate the type of frame that is frozen in the upper left. Yeah, we can as long as we don't move anything. Let's it's a big ask to move the ship and control the light. Let's uh, let's deal with that constraint then and get Atalanta at a safe standoff distance because right. this, this just go, isn't enough. I'm gonna right. go. I'm gonna go ahead and hold position and let things settle a bit before right. we do that. Yeah. Bridge, bridge, nav, hold position. Yeah, we can't. Uh, with no Norbit map and yeah, I, I understand and moving the ship, you know. It's yeah. yeah, if only we had a Norbit map, this uh, whole photo imaging thing would be a lot easier. Even uh, with that, moving parallel with that close to the wall is a bit dodgy for. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't get a say no. Call to from my boss if to you wanted to uh, <laughs> tell me to stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> stop that. <laughs> he usually says. And one day I was had a bunch of mud on the porch, and he was in the lounge, and I had the whole porch with the manipulator, and I was shaking it. <laughs> Message from Josh. Stop, Actually, stop yeah, doing that. I don't. That is an option if we want to do a turbo Norbit. Do one pass. I could get the. I could get this this edge in uh, in our plotters here. Yeah, or we could do. Uh, I think we're gonna do it right now. I think John, let Jonathan finish what he's doing here. It would be, uh, you know, if we come up the wall, that takes a chip dynamic out. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind up the wall. Okay. Yeah, I think we could sneak up on it again and then uh, get that left one set up how we had it and then come up. Or Hercules can fly into the shot and then come up. And Chris, we're not, we're not far off the, the other map. So we won't, we won't be totally blind, but it, you know, the map, of course, does not have the resolution you have. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start taking little steps in. Yeah, you could move 10 meters yeah. from there closer. I think that'll be close enough. Yeah. So bridge, bridge. Less than 10 meters, 280. Um, let's come up and just verify that overhang, All right? Okay. Here, if you put... Am I good to change my heading to see yeah. you again? Uh, I'll, go, I'll come in front of you. Okay, sorry. There we, go. we never explored up, so I don't know how far it overhangs. You know, We're ten no. meters from it down here, but who knows what's happening above us? So. Yeah, we did see some healthy overhangs. Come off the wall a bit too and hit it with your left side. We can see probably the top. Hey, Raj, you look at it with orbit. Yeah. Right. We just come up. There nice. it goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty steep and yeah, and it's still and, and, and overhanging. Yeah, still pretty steep. Okay. Well, we'll get an idea if it moves closer, or further away, in Atlanta there, but you know, some chunks hanging out there. Uh, da 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 da. 30 feet sounds better than 10 meters, but <laughs> Atlanta's moves aren't always predictable. 
So that's not entirely scary, is it? No. So you see your, your runaway. Well, it looks like there's another step if you look in Norbit. Uh, it looks like it in Atlantis. Yeah, you see it there well. too. Yeah. Uh, I'm guessing we stopped recording. Oh, sorry, yes. You're dragging me around yeah. now. Really? Why is that? Where am I? About. Uh, I'll come this way. Okay. Oh, I'll come this way. To uh, Chris's Norbit right here. I wish I had like direct control over both Ready? computers at once. This is. We can do oh. the Norbit run while we're waiting. Oh okay. yeah, you sure. want to do that? Sure. sure. All right. Yeah. I'm happy. Uh, I have a moment here. Let me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess go to the end of your tether. Then. Uh, right. That's is pretty good. Uh, oh, it looks actually quite good. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let me put a break in the log so I know what to look for. Roger. We'll just do a quick one, and hopefully I can get that up here and get it in the plotters. Are you far enough away from the thing? Uh, a little bit off would help. Right here. Just uh, seeing it in real time will probably be enough for me to, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I'll be there. Yep. I'm going to click the start button and you can go. Right, right. This will clear out all this mess. We had some bad nav data, so this kind of turned into a disaster. <laughs> Always blame uh, the nav data. Uh, you'll have to come up, Bryce. I'm, I'm coming right at you. I mean, Kay. it's my own nav data, so Ooh. I got nobody to blame right, for my right, nav right, data right, but right. myself. You're coming towards me now? Yeah, you okay. can see yourself in the stereo camera there, so you have to come up probably pretty quickly. So I don't run into my tether. Could probably turn. Our tether. Could probably. Oh, no, you're good. That heading right there is good. Looks like zero one zero is probably the strike of the cliff. I can uh, change the head a bit, but we'll still go on this trajectory. Let me turn this off so we can see what's going on. Uh, Octomat, there we zero go. Zero one zero. Recent pings. Yeah, I can see it in the old school sonars zero one zero see where it was kind of pokies pokies out there that's right where all the basalt that's stuff where the, yeah, is. That's where the columns are there see he could see columns on his sonar chris <laughs> Ooh. are you gonna need me to come back down as you go on yeah. the other side yep So what you're seeing on uh, channel three is uh, the Norbit there. mapping. Nice Dan, from a pilot's perspective, what's the value of mapping something like this for uh, the type of move we're asking you to do for camera work? Uh, it becomes a familiar neighborhood, familiar lighted, well-lit neighborhood instead of a dark, scary one you've never been to before. And what we see is the flat, the green flat floor of this part of the valley. Now, it, now it's more blue and purple. Uh, and then now in this display, the green is the sharp wall, then a ledge, oh and yeah, then a, another, another little cliff. And you can see the position of Hercules just above the, the upper ledge. Probably a better analogy is uh, walking around your own living room at night with the lights off. Uh, yeah. Or walking around your own living room at like night it. with the lights on versus walking around uh, a friend's house that you've never stayed the night at before with the lights off. You're 
you're okay. bound to run into the coffee table. Or a, hot yeah. or a hotel that I did Yeah, a hotel with the lights off. And yeah. got a nice black eye as I walk, walked into a <laughs> open door in the bathroom in Hawaii. You know. I'm probably in front of some sort of impressive meeting. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and it always happens that way. <laughs> So right. yes, how long is a nautical mile? A nautical mile is 6,076 feet. 1.14 regular miles. Yeah. Why on earth a does regular the nautical mile is 5,280? Oh, well, let, well, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I the was nautical curious. mile is uh, one degree of latitude, equivalent to one degree of latitude, which is why we use it in the nautical world instead of the statute mile, which is, of course, a thousand paces. Oh. So a nautical mile, in theory, changes its. Well, no. It, no, no, no. It doesn't. No, it, that's why it's latitude, latitude not longitude. Yeah, Correct. Exactly, yeah. 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 So it, it it just works really nice with the geographic coordinate system, and that's oh. why we use knots because it's a nautical mile an hour. Oh. So. It translates well to. Uh, the geodetic yeah. coordinate system. One nautical mile is 1,852 meters. Interesting, yeah. And here on Nautilus, we have an eclectic mix of <laughs> uh, <laughs> knots, meters per second, meters per minute, uh, pounds. Depth and feet. Meters. The other one was uh, pound meters. We got one of them. <laughs> When oh, I, I see. When I was I, a graduate student, what am I seeing up here? When Maybe I was a graduate noise. student, we we actually worked in a different unit. We worked in what were called deep toe miles, and a deep toe mile was six thousand feet. You just make that up? No, it was <laughs> it, 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 it was done because the in those days the okay the Wait, it, a deep toe mile is six thousand feet. Yeah, that's a nautical mile. Well, it's, no, nautical mile is 6,076 feet. Is it? Yeah. That's uh, next week on Mapper Map Off. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Her get the end of its tether. So somebody wrote in, I have no idea what's going on as you all dance the ROVs to choreograph uh, the photogrammetry, but you all make it sound so fascinating. All right, that's how you're done with that? Yeah, right. All right. As long as it sounds Break good. the log. I'm going to leave it on this survey file so you have you continue to get... You can use the continue to use that visualization. Right. And, uh, and so now that we also have this, if if uh, Chris is actually confident that this is a good map, uh, to look at you. You want me to I would up? also like to no, go back through back this up. area and, and thoroughly yeah. cover the photogrammetry from one, the base to the top. This one should be a halfway decent map, yeah. All right. I think that this would be very because we really haven't done Chris a, a proper super vertical wall like this, and and okay. with the columnar basalt, I think it'd be. A very nice demonstration. A lot less frightening then. Somebody asked how many bananas. <laughs> I mean, how many bananas? So, so Chris, you the, like? the reason they worked in deep toe miles was uh, this is stuff before you were born, but the the analog paper recorders had a sweep across the page that was set in fathoms. Yeah. Three feet, and so this way you can. Convert are we going back down? fathoms yeah, I'm to miles very the wall easily. Okay. I'm surprised they so had paper back then. <laughs> yeah, uh -oh. it, 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 we had a we, 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 we had a we had a kind of chew bark. We had a chew bark and then yeah. it. papyrus. I <laughs> so since we're talking esoteric units, why do, do you know why we have fathoms? No. Why we measure depth in fathoms in particular? No. So when you originally used to take a sounding, you used to take a, literally a lead line, so a line with a lead okay, on Jonathan, it. Okay, Jonathan, you ready? I oh, yeah. am. Uh, can we do a test light off first? Oh. I'm going to switch back to high pack real quick. Let's see. So uh, we, and can we get, can we get, I, I feel like uh, I we were gonna do the about 20, 20 feet away right now. Yeah, I thought we were going to go uh, photogrammetry mode. Oh, yeah, we could do, um, can we do... Stand by. Let me just not. I, I don't need. Uh, what do I need to do? I so need to undo it. was a comment that a nautical uh, mile is a minute. Very, very, as latitude, you can see not there. A, not a yeah. degree of latitude. It's very, uh, so that's it's very dusty here. So. Nautical mile is a, a minute. Okay, let's. Oh, yeah, sorry. 
host. Uh, sorry, I'm still on 100% from our Norbit run, but let's. Um, if you don't mind, I'm all set up for the immersive filming. It will be a. It will be another 10 minutes for me to switch around again. Roger. Okay. I'm let's just do this. We're moving closer anyway, so I'm gonna all come right. back to our our good side, the south, and Roger. come away from Thank the wall you. a little. And I have to say, for those of us who just like to explore, this is frustrating. But yep. this is what we're here for, and I have to keep reminding yeah. myself that. Yeah. Well, we will explore the top of this ridge by the time we're done well, photogrammetry. We, we will. Photogrammetry. And, and I just think of the investment we're making for future exploration. Yeah. By perfecting these techniques, we're really opening the world of exploration. Oh, we them. had a question earlier about, like, if this was going to be something permanent on... Hercules, like this, the kind of filming. Oh, sorry, I think I, I think that it will become something that's more regularly used. We don't have any chance or any plans to make this permanent. It's a very large system, and it's very complex to set up, as you can see. But again, that's that's actually this the reason for this cruise is to actually think more about how we integrate items like this and how they're used and. Um, as Dan was saying earlier, you know, he doesn't really care about the image quality for immersive filming. He enjoys the system because it operates, it offers him a different perspective and uh, helps significantly with his situational awareness. So we'll, we'll like, as an organization who runs a ship with data engineers, with ROV pilots, with people like me, and scientists, it all those all of those little elements need to come together to say, okay, what's what does it take to support the system, and is it worth the 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 additional um, uh, investment? Investment, yeah. Because it's uh, not it's not just money; it's investment of time, yep. effort, and everything else. Um, let me pose a question to you and Dan, and this may be. Your uh, yes, please. Yeah, you can come down. We'll try and. Uh, get back to our uh, crazy close uh, immersive lighting mode. And this may be something that is already a reality in some places, but I can certainly envision a time when these kinds of cameras can be fed directly into a augmented reality or yes. a virtual reality headset. And then I, I, I asked the pilot, would you be comfortable navigating? I mean, you're, you're, you're looking at monitors That's anyway. It's we not. Were last it's time. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, and I, I think that this helps inform how Let's to miniaturize systems like this as well. Sorry, say again? Let's try 10 meters, 240, Atlantis heading. Yep. Bridge, bridge nav, 10 meters, 240. Up on angle. There you go, Chris. I love this question. Yeah. Is it really hard to integrate the Norbit multibeam on the vehicle? I thought all I had to do was attach a transducer. No, it is, <laughs> hey, that's it is a, a lot, lot more than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the transducer is actually a very small that's, part of this. Yeah. Uh, knowing where the transducer is in the world uh, while you're, you know, 2,000 meters below the surface is harder. Uh, yeah, because the transducer can measure, you know, centimeters of resolution. But if you don't know where the vehicle is located to within centimeters, uh, your map's not going to be that good. Yeah. Just so a pretty picture. Yeah. Just, yeah, exactly. And maybe not even a pretty picture because as you move around yeah, right. and, and restrike the same place, that's not really the same place. Uh, it becomes a distorted picture. But really, the, the difficulty with all multi-beam mapping, whether from from Hercules, which has added complexity because it's not yes, connected please. directly to a satellite system and a, a very expensive initial navigation system, um, or, or from so the to, uh, ship, is the integration. Uh, it's yeah, integrating yeah, all the different the, components uh, and trying to the, get this very yeah, accurate uh, location no, of where every, blue ones. where every return comes from. And, and Chris has done or a just, uh, job go here. Or yeah. go it's, back uh, again. There we go. There you go. Yeah, um, good. And there's always more to fix. There's always more to do. You want craft back? Uh, Report you mean? Mm. Just um, Dan. Sure. Yeah. While uh, while Atalanta is kind of crawling up here, could you back off of the wall and kind of get as far out so we can see Atalanta's beam of light slowly revealing? 
That Looks might like be a, a good the, shot. The reveal shot they get. Just since uh, Atalanta's moving at approximately the pace of a wounded squirrel. <laughs> yep. So, so one of the one of the viewers chimed in about the concept of using VR or, or AR, uh, and said it's a totally different problem. The seasick factor with using the VR headset and being on the boat uh, and the relative motion, and and I totally agree. But I have to say, at least in our lab, we've done a series of what we call <laughs> nauseogenic studies. I've seen Whoa. some pretty silly videos from you. Exactly. Oh, yeah. a, 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 dedi a dedicated. Graduate yep. student got into a wave, wave tank like you want Atalanta directly? with a VR headset yeah, let's, uh, uh, and tried to uh, do a whole bunch of data processing here, as if he was on a ship oh. until to find out what conditions until he got sick. Poor yeah, guy. keep going back. I, I think but this is beautiful. That's dedication. Uh, no, gonna, but what they developed uh, was a way We're going to bring Atalanta's heading to the right again. That's what we did last time. Okay. So she's uh, looking right at the wall right now. She's... Uh, Looking at it, 45. Oh yeah. All right. I am. I'm recording now. So the ROV is yours. Frame that up to make this beautiful reveal of Atalanta doing its job. The left frame is. Uh oh. What happened to my right? Uh oh. Is that a fuzz? So, oh, no, Larry, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, so what happened they're to they're the experiment? Ju that's okay if they're frozen, are they? I'm, I'm all right with that. I can just do it in the Hurricane Atalanta views. Uh, um, there, that should be about. I think. Uh, okay, here we go. I would. Uh, Herc just coming into the light here. Yeah, there's just still not enough light actually on well, I'm the. I'm just uh, coming into it here. Oh, we're not, yeah. No, Life pool's not there yet. Shadow. 20 can meters you just, away. Uh, can you back up all the way? And uh, let's just get the big shot of, the big wide shot of um, Atalanta in situ as it's, as it's approaching. Okay, so they were able to do this experiment and then use the motion sensor to compensate for the motion you'd see, in, and it was actually very effective. Um, they were able okay. to work right. on much, much stronger conditions that way. Yeah, keep going back, 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 back. We're coming up on watch change here, Jonathan, so. Okay. Uh, so there's uh, another question about, um, is there anything uh, special about the Norbit compared to what the question here is the Blue View? And those are two very different things. The Norbit is a multi-beam sonar. The Blue View is actually an acoustic camera. It takes a two-dimensional um, acoustic picture. And so uh, Ooh, like quite, quite different technologies. It's a uh, modern replacement for a collision avoidance sonar on an ROV. And they're both very, very effective. Okay. Um, this this shot still isn't really doing it for me. Uh, I don't think that we we just can't safely get enough light on the the feature. Uh, what do you think, Dan? I think you're going to get a lot of. Uh, push back from Rennie when, if he walks in here and that vehicle's closer than 20 meters to the yeah. wall. Yeah. So... He might He might do it. I don't know. <laughs> he's going to be... Uh, he's not going to be... Yeah. He's not going to be thrilled with doing it. It's yeah. a risk. I think that's fair. But I'm not sure it's worth it. So. Well, we did so it once and got away with it. Yeah. My taste shot did, didn't I, work, I so... I tasted the light. What's that? I tasted the light. <laughs> yeah, I need your son hanging and off of Atalanta. Do you think if I bring Atalanta up at all, it'll improve it? You can try, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. Uh, 
Yeah. It's not getting any better. A little bit, but yeah, I don't know. not really. Yeah. Let's um, can you drive the ROV up and let's just try to do that inspection kind of shot a little bit closer and see if there's just enough light to see cool structure. Yeah. Okay, we're maybe coming up. Can you look down a little for me? Shift yeah, change. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get enough light. Uh, one of the other challenges here, there's a lot of uh, flock in the water, so that's attenuating yeah. Atlantis light. Yeah. We're in the canyon where all the silt's blowing through. And yeah. All right, well... Um, I'd say uh, maybe uh, photogrammetry mode. Agreed. Okay, so um, I'm going to have... Um, Simon, go. when he comes back on watch, we can prep him to do just a small box and yeah, he's wiggle. he's here and uh, it's gonna take uh, five or ten minutes for the entire van to watch change over. So okay, I'm gonna stop recording then and uh, nice. let you back off to safety. Sorry about that. We tried. Yeah, that's all that matters. <laughs> Let there be light. Uh, we're still in, uh, you want to go back to DBL mode? So we can use, uh... Yeah. And I can use my, uh, station cube. Wait, I'm not there yet. All right. It was a farce. All right. Now I'm, I'm gonna there. Okay. Or wait, am I? I don't know. Wait, no, I'm not. Oh, wait, yeah, I am. Sorry. <laughs> We're good. We're good? Yeah. I can press the There's button. There's many places to switch it in the new version. Yeah, I don't get it. Okay, uh, I'm off comms. So I'm going to hand it over to Simon. Folks, this is Daniela Gerfay, Science Communication Fellow. I'm taking over for Ale. We're going to be doing switch change here, so as everyone's kind of briefing their next shift, please bear with us for a moment, and then we'll get back to you and start with um, introductions.
That's correct, yeah. Hey, Simon. Yeah. Um, you in a good moment just to discuss the next move here? Uh, yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, so this is pretty simple. It's just going to be a photogrammetry move, um, kind of within a square of what... Um, hey, Rennie. Let me actually wait for Rennie to get online. So Jonathan, the chat saying that even though you guys didn't get the shot you wanted, the image is still stunning. Oh yeah, thank you. It it is it is a stunning spot to be in and a fantastic uh, opportunity for us all to do this type of work. All right, folks, we're still in the midst of. Um, shift change so we're going to continue working with operations and then we'll start answering your questions again We all sacrifice. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Sorry. Hey, Dan, uh, let me know when you're online there. I'm online. Okay. I think you were talking it out back there. I can, um, this Norbit map, the, uh, the one that we used to come down is kind of, um, losing its usefulness as we get to the edge, so I may take that out soon. That's fine with me. Yeah, we're already there. Okay, and then it looks
looks like we just added a high res um, high res one here so you can see here we're just kind of at the base um, the start of this wall and as we were talking about with um, during the meetings it's, it's this wall we just want to interrogate I've, I know Jonathan's got some stuff planned here but this is the area we don't, there's no need to get all the way at away point six it's just kind of a, an end point if we get there but really it's anywhere in here just kind of we're just starting to get to the steepness um, we've got like a really tall wall here this seems to be like a, a bit of a ledge that we're just kind of at the foot of here um, so, so that's good I'm good with that Renny so Jonathan, what's your plans? Um, there's just a ton of backscatter right now. Um, so what I'd prefer us to do, uh, okay, so the, the, the goal of this photogrammetry is to, let's uh, say a 20 by 20 meter area that was intensively surveyed by Norbit along this, uh, along this wall. Um, we should include at least uh, five or 10 meters worth of these, uh, the sandy bottom uh, in the model. Um, and then essentially uh, just form a box that goes up the cliff and uh, intensively surveys the area, um, including maybe kind of poking over that little rise that we saw in um, like the topper, upper edge of the cliff, um, that's the if available, if, that, if that's kind of within that 20 by 20 meter box. Uh, so we'll want to kind of maintain this standoff distance. It looks fairly good. Can you turn the mids on as well? See what happens with all of this backscatter. Oh dear. Yeah, you're gonna. Uh, and possibly maybe we start the survey a little bit, uh, you know, 20 meters to the right, uh, lateraling along. Maybe we could have kicked up some extra junk here, doing the moves. But um, that's that's up to you guys. Uh, just uh, the goal: 20 by 20 meters uh, with good Norbit data on top of it. Okay, and then with that, do is that is the intent to just kind of leave Atalanta as in as is? It's in a good place, and just kind of whatever yeah. tether link we can get. I don't, I don't mind, I don't mind Atalanta. Up to you. Okay, well, we'll we're uh, going to have to be pretty close to the wall like this for to get the punch through the backscatter. So. <clears throat> okay, and is this cinema or photogrammetry? This is all photogrammetry. photogrammetry, and it's using the camera, the dominant camera on the screen up there, and then the lower right camera are the two ones that I'm recording. Okay, okay. that's good, good info. So what else do you do want to start at? Uh, I'm currently 12 and a half meters off bottom. So. Sorry, was that a question for me? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. But, uh, uh, you're coming in just a little soft for me. Um, what? Uh, what? What depth do you want to start at? He's at 12 and a half. Oh, uh, let's start at six. Have, yep. have the difference, and that's a good amount of sand. Uh, I just need, just need enough wall to coalesce the image. You know. Roger that. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this a little, um, this wall a little blurrier, a little more transparent. So yeah, whatever your furthest extent is um, to your port side would be while you still have the tether. I, I intend to, if we can, we'll just leave Atalanta there. You can go as far on yep. your port as you can, and then we'll go as far okay. as starboard up. Roger that. And, uh, this is just recent, so this is the wall right there, and that's all it. Okay, Zach, I'm going to go ahead and start since they're making some moves. And um, I am recording 212 and 214 uh, once every three seconds. Are you doing time lapse here? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Okay. If you uh, zoom out so we just see the, the extent of that tether there, Mike, that would yep. be great. Oh, ooh, yeah. So we'll know how far we can go left. I must use this cookie as a mouse. But not a smart. <laughs> Did you bring one for everybody? 
Somebody yeah, left let, it here I'll for me. I did, not bring it. It. Yeah. I did not bring it myself. It's gift. It's coming down on the wire, just to give you a little bit more. Yeah. Since uh, cookies are not allowed in the van, I'm going to have to confiscate. Where, where'd cookie. you get a cookie? I just saw the, like, <laughs> the bread thing. Hand it over. There was no cookies at 3. I have no idea where the cookie came from. Oh, I don't know I'm, what the cookies I'm jealous. came from. See John, what you've John done now, Renny? <laughs> I should have said nothing well, about you the cookie. You appreciate it when you came <laughs> in <Chris Chris>. cookies. <laughs> I think I've missed cookies every single day of this expedition. <laughs> Zach didn't realize there is a treats at three I was, until like two days ago. I was there today and the cookies were earlier, they told me. Oh, no. Not every day has been cookies. Uh, sometimes it's like a bread, sweet bread of yeah. some sort. It, it's, it wasn't banana bread, but banana bread-esque. Oh, I bet it was pumpkin bread. So, it Jonathan, that's pumpkin. probably okay. towards that's the probably. extent there. Yeah, I'd like say that's it. about it. So, you want to come... Uh, well, you want to keep the same altitude, Jonathan, and we'll come all the way as far to the starboard as we can go along the wall at the same same altitude? Um, yeah, sure. Kay. I think that's yeah, good. I think too. that's probably too big of a square uh, just in terms of t uh, size. You don't have to go all the way from tether to tether. Okay, you can... Um, is that something that's going to affect you, or can you cut it in post, or what do you... We'll do... Oh. Um, I just mean in terms of saving some time, okay, uh, yeah, you sure. could maybe have the tether size because we, we have other data sets like this, but since we invested in uh, the Norbit data, I, I want to make something of this. Okay, sure. Um, Actually, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at the Norbit map. Did we intensively survey this far to the east? Not this far to the east, no. Oh, then we want to start off, we, we, we should start off further to the to the west then, to the right. Okay, we'll stay in the, in the Norbit data. Thank you. Yep. I was, I was going for as much as we could get, but not if that doesn't help you. Okay. Yeah, now I Norbit, small Norbit area. Well, if we do this little overlap, it'll give me a um, chance to get set up, and when we get into the Norbit data, then uh, should oh, be yeah. dialed in. Roger, so. yes. I'm, I'm recording now, so I'll take as much as I can get. Roger that. Okay, we're on. Okay. Let's start moving along. This will be a great data set to show what happens when you don't have Norbit data. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to fill in the gaps. All right, Rennie and Jonathan, let me know when everyone is settled and ready to do introductions. All good up here. <laughs> All right, Congressman, would you like to start us off? Yes, this is former Congressman John Culberson from Houston representing the west side of Houston in the Texas House and the U.S. Congress for the last 18 years, and I chaired the Commerce, Justice, Science, Appropriations Subcommittee, and it was my privilege to be able to help uh, Dr. Robert Ballard with the uh, ocean exploration funding. Uh, he was an expert uh, guide to me to help NOAA, to help the country with ocean exploration, and this is my seventh expedition on the Nautilus. So it's a uh, it, tremendously important work searching for rare earth elements, mapping the oceans, and understanding what the United States owns in its outer ec exclusive economic zone. Thank you, Congressman. All right, Dave, we'll move on up towards you. Hey, Dave Robertson, uh, video engineer on this watch. And um, when I'm not out here on Nautilus, which is about half the year, uh, I'm retired. And then Mike. I'm Mike Burns, I'm the Atalanta pilot for this watch. Uh, professional mariner for the last 10 plus years, uh, including in science in the Arctic regions and uh, tropical regions. And uh, yeah, when I'm not on here, I'm captaining boats or doing road trips. Thank you, Mike. And over to you, Simon. I'm Simon, I'm the uh, Hercules pilot for this next four hours. Uh, 17 years as an ROV pilot, former Royal Air Force. Um, worked in the oil and gas sector for uh, 13 years, 13, 14 years. Last three years in science, mostly in the Pacific off the coast of Vancouver in the Southern Pacific and uh, a little bit off the coast of Newfoundland. But, uh, yeah, my first trip on Nautilus. And then Rennie. Hey, this is Renato Kane. Um, been sailing on Nautilus since 2013. I do navigation and mapping uh, for Ocean Exploration Trust. 
Thank you, Rennie. Zach, over to you. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Zach Taylor. I'm over here in the data logger position. I'll be keeping track of all the interesting things we see today. Um, yeah, this is my first time here a lot here on Nautilus. Um, when I'm not here, I'm a grad student at UH Hilo, um, finishing up my master's degree here soon. All right, and Dan. Hello, I'm Dan Dietz. I am the watch lead for today. Um, I guess my role here is to make sure that the dive plan moves along. We find cool stuff to for Jonathan to test out his technology, and we get the ROV back safe, and everyone's happy. My day job, I am a program officer at the Office of Naval Research um, in Ocean Sciences. So we're responsible for looking at answering the next big questions in the ocean. Um, you know, we still are learning all kind of things. This is a new unexplored territory. And then I also develop technologies to go test those hypotheses that we make and, you know, take the next step towards adding to our knowledge base. I've been trying to convince Dan to take me to Galapagos with him <laughs> on his next research thing. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> i take that. All right, Jonathan. Um, I'm Jonathan Feely. Um, I'm Ocean Exploration Trust media producer, and uh, uh, we've developed this uh, camera system over the last year uh, with the support of the Office of Naval Research. Uh, this official name of the camera system is called the Wide Field Camera Array, um, but we know it affectionately here as Triclops because it's a series of three wide-angle cameras that together allow us to do some pretty awesome 3D photogrammetry work, as you're seeing right now, um, and as well as filming very high-quality immersive footage uh, suitable for uh, VR, AR headsets and uh, giant dome theater uh, presentation. So. Super honor to be out here, um, and I am obviously over the moon to see this incredible camera system uh, kind of come to life and develop these models and film these amazing parts. And we are all loving the images and videos and photographs coming off of these camera sets. It's been really stunning to be able to watch. My name is Daniela Griffay. I am the Science Communication Fellow on board. When I'm not on board here, I am a high school science teacher. I teach marine science and AP environmental science over at Radford High School, located kind of over by Pearl Harbor on Oahu, Hawaii. Um, prior to being a teacher, I worked as a marine biologist for 10 years. Most of my work was in Alaska and fisheries work, but I did some overseas environmental consulting work as well. Um, so to get to a few of your questions, there was one a little bit ago that was asking if we're saying Atlanta as in Atlanta, Georgia. We are not saying Atlanta, we are saying Atalanta with an A in there, Atalanta, um, a Greek goddess. And, there, and um, Atalanta is not the same as Argus. So Argus is a little bit bigger, heavier. Argus weighs about... Um, I have the information here. Argus weighs 4,700 pounds, and Atalanta weighs about half that at 2,200 pounds. Um, why are we using, Simon, why are we using Atalanta instead of Argus for this expedition? That is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Being my first trip on here, it's uh, <laughs> maybe Mike can answer that uh, more succinctly than I can. Yeah, um, so we're using Atalanta uh, for this mission uh, because Atalanta, being a bit smaller than Argus is, uh, is a little bit more nimble, a little bit quicker to move, and also um, a bit more handier uh, in the water as well as on deck. So we're able to actually get Atalanta uh, fairly close to Hercules for some of these shots, uh, but also is able to keep up with Hercules in higher, uh, higher movements. So. And then, Mike, can you please talk uh, just about? Just one, one second. Sorry. So, uh, Jonathan, we've come to the uh, to the northern extent here. Can you help us with the overlap? We want to go uh, vertical a bit and kind of scan back or along the wall. Yeah, sure. You can see that uh, kind of uh, cigar-shaped rock on the left-hand side. Um, I'd say go up, put that at the lower third. And then let's zoom back over. Okay, let's... Um, In other words, maybe rise, uh, call it four meters, and let's see what that looks like. Four Keeping meters. an eye on them. Four meters, Roger. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, so we'll watch. Yeah, watch that lower right hand. And lower I just right one. Yeah. want to make sure that we get 33% overlap in the image. Okay. That's, so you can that's keep good going up. 33%. Yeah. Good there? Or yeah. Good there? Yeah. Good. How much of a rise was that? Uh, it was around three meters. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you can execute your left-hand lateral at, at haste. Um, um, I'm shooting one photo every three seconds, so you can zoom, zoom as much as you're comfortable with. Okay. I just, uh, yeah. And again, I only really care about the spot that has been norbited. Okay. So, we'll, yeah, we'll stop there with the bottom of the norbit map. Roger. Okay, starting to come All to right. my port. Come on up port. Good. Okay, Daniela. All, All right. Good. Brittany, would you be potentially able to answer a question or Jonathan sure. here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a viewer asking, what is the difference between a multi-beam and acoustic camera? Not it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so multi-beam sonar, what we're using is sound. So we're emitting, um, we're emitting an acoustic pulse from a, a point source, uh, we we use multi-beam with uh, the ship, um, but in this case, we actually have a higher we have a um, multi-beam mounted on the ROV, which allows us to be closer to the seafloor, and we can actually get a higher resolution um, model. The camera system we're using does not uh, use acoustics. It's um, so we're we're essentially taking a lot of photographs and we're able to um, stitch them together uh, in three dimensions. Um, using, uh, or it's a process we call photogrammetry. Um, and then the idea for this, what we're doing right now in front of you, is I think we're gonna, um, we've, we've kind of used, we've done a high resolution multi-beam map here. We're gonna do some photogrammetry to pair it with, and we're gonna take a look at um, kind of, uh, I think Jonathan is your purpose here to kind of like assess um, uh, the uh, differences between the two and kind of like... Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the perceived resolution and the utility of an optical system versus a... or how they complement each other between that and the multi-beam. Yeah, it's funny, you know, on this cruise, which was largely for the, um, you know, in support of the uh, invaluable tech of the photogrammetry and the, the system that um, that's being developed, we found use cases for it, but also our um, high-resolution uh, multi-beam sonar that's mounted on Hercules as well. And they 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 have some overlap, but they're not the same. You know, they really they shine in their own different ways. Um, so we're kind of evaluating use cases for for both, uh, which is kind of a a, a nice little uh, bonus we're getting here in in testing these uh, the camera system out. Yeah, incredible, Just, uh, incredible bonus, honestly. The, it really adds so much to the perspective of the scientific utility of both of these tools that we have the time, really, also from the exploration sense that we, we have the latitude and the time to do exactly what this is, which was, um, in this instance, before uh, Rennie and Simon came on, I was trying to do some filming here. Um, Dan and the... Um, uh, uh, navigator Chris Krasnovsky, they were a little uncomfortable having Atalanta so close without knowing what was there. We were able to pop up, do a quick Norbit scan, get situational awareness of how high and if there was any overhangs for this, and then come back and um, be more, uh, be safer, and then also have that additional data um, to, to do what we're doing right now. So. Okay, we're at the southern extent there. Um, Copy that. Yep. Gonna up some up more, you can look at that yeah. weird spider-looking thing. Sure, it looks we'll like see. a yeah. crinoid. And Daniela, just in addition to your question, I've used uh, acoustic cameras and multi-beam sonars forward-looking on ROVs. The acoustic cameras tend to have a shorter fixed range. The one I used was, uh, had a fixed range of around 30 meters. Uh, <laughs> things like Blue View and Gemini multi-beam sonars that we can mount on the front of the sonar are a much wider range and a much broader beam to uh, to look at stuff. Thank you for that, Simon. Um, I also have another question here in the chat. They're asking if the rocks here are left from the great landslide that came off of Oahu. Yeah, that's Wait. good, Simon. Yep, that's uh, three meters up, and I'll start moving to my starboard. All the beans. 
We are not currently located off of Oahu. We are actually off of the island Molokai, or Molokai-e. Um, and these are basalt columns. So this is actually lava and how it's cooled. And so you kind of have this octagonal column form because of uneven cooling as the lava hits the ocean water. So that ocean water is very cold. The outside of the lava is going to cool quicker than the inside lava. And you kind of get this octagonal um, columns formed due to this. So these kind of uh, cooling formation. It looks very similar if you've ever seen mud dry. And when that mud dry kind of gets these ox, uh, octagonal shapes in it. And you can see these columns around the world. A really famous one is over in Ireland, Giant's Causeway. Um, there's some that match over in Scotland. There's a really fun legend between those. Um, but they're also found in other locations. But they're not crazy common. You have them in one or two Ooh. spots around the continent. That's a nice basalt right there. So yes, here we're coming across some really great views and images. Yeah. And you can see this cooling effect and formations here. So this is lava. It is not a rock slide. How high is the uh, estimated top of this? Um, what, what did I just get us into with this three meters up? Why are you are you feeling like you're oh. getting enough coverage or not? Oh no 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 no! I I feel like I'm getting enough coverage. I'm just curious. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, so we have the Norbit. Uh, you can see it on the Norbit screen. Oh, the box. Yeah. But but not. I don't have the actual depth readout. Oh on yeah, yeah, gotcha. On these, so it's a deep sea fly on the screen. <laughs> Look at that. Ew. So I meant more hexagonal, not octag. Oct I, my ge geog er, geometry terms are just getting me all tongue-tied. Dan, I was wondering if you could give us a little bit of a dive breakdown so far or tell us a little more about our site we have here? Sure. So this morning we dove around uh, 9 a.m., um, got down to the site, which is about 1,000 meters down, and then started an orbit survey. So they that's um, it's not going out now, but you uh, previous uh, people have seen the orbit survey. Um, that allowed us to essentially pick out a, bu a bunch of uh, rock outcroppings that they then investigated. And we are on one of them. And our plan right now is to finish this survey here where we did the Norbit. So that kind of gives us a sound, a high resolution sound map of this. And then now we're taking the visual image map, which is even higher resolution. Coming up three meters. Uh. And then we're going to proceed down the canyon as it gets steeper on each side of us. And when time runs out, we're going to climb the canyon walls and see what we see. So we're going to explore the canyon walls on the way up after this. Um, one thing I'm forgetting, Rennie, uh, Simon, um, can we at the end of this move for Hercules get the um, lasers on? Sure. At the end of this vertical move, or the yeah, horizontal? Yeah, the end of the vertical move. Yep, no problem. Lasers, laser, on. laser. Oh, are we back to one? That's not very helpful. Oh, there was we're two. Back to there one? was two. The first thing this morning. <laughs> That's something. Did you got your little it? red book over there, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> I will add it to notes. Oh <laughs> no. So if everyone wondering why one laser is not useful, we use normally two lasers, and those are set at 10 centimeters apart. So when we look at the image, we know that you know we can essentially measure the distance between the two beams and find out it's 10 centimeters, you know, and then translate the scale. But with one laser, we have no idea what the distance nope. is. Uh, so that's another utility to this uh, concept of doing sensor fusion. So uh, Norbit has a very good sense of how far X and Y and its points are, X, Y, and Z. Um, so with a little bit of uh, tomfoolery in the back end with uh, uh, Chris to, to assist, we should be able to scale this out appropriately. Okay. But it's always good to have a second measurement in anything. Moving port. Coming to port.
I'd say let's just do one more. That's three, six, nine, twelve. Yeah, one more uh, vertical after this, and that we can keep exploring. Roger. This isn't the most scintillating biodiversity covered. It looks like where the villain, villain would be in a Disney movie. This is true, yes. Reminds me very much of Ursula's cave. <laughs> we saw that yesterday with the beautiful <laughs> things on top. <laughs> we did manage to uh, create a 3D model, an incredible one, of a uh, gigantic coral, and it's got a large cave structure underneath, and really shows how... Uh, how interesting it is to view an object like a cave uh, in full 3D. You're just starting to see the top of that ledge there in your bottom camera. Yeah, um, I like of that. The triclops there. Yeah. I'm excited to see uh, Quinn print out 3D print some of those corals from yesterday as well. Oh yeah, That's I think he's hard incredible. at work right now. We have a for the viewers out there. We have a 3D printer on board that. Um, We've been taking these models and just kind of chucking them in and seeing what prints out. And it's been incredible to see these objects that we just saw six hours ago come to life. And this 3D printer also has technical use of um, if camera system breaks or ROV parts and we need to print a new one, we can do that with the 3D printer. So. Yeah. Super cool tool in our arsenal, right, Simon? Absolutely. Have you, Simon, Mike, have you had to 3D print anything for the ROVs during this expedition? Uh, not, not during this expedition, uh, I don't think. No, not for this expedition. But in previous ones? In previous ones, uh, not for these ROVs, but for other applications. Yeah, yeah we built, uh, I think on these ROVs, we have the little balls that we use to release the Niskin. And the lens covers for Triclops were all 3D printed right here on the ship. This is true. It's really impressive, Simon, on how close you can get to this rock formation. Do you, could you share with our viewers how you are able to figure out depth and distance and keep Hercules safe though, but still get those amazing shots. So we have um, several um, things I can use for that. One of them being the, uh, the beautiful 180 degree view cameras we have on board give us a spectacular view of what's coming up to our left and right, but we also have the, the one on orbit maps that have been created, plus our own sonars on board that give us a, a nice view, of, you know, uh, almost, I'd say 120 degrees out from either side of the vehicle so we can we can assess what's coming up. All good there on that um, movement. I'm going to do a DVL reset. Right um, yeah. Chris uses a different solution, so it's OK. And then Jonathan, could you share with us what was the seed that created the idea of creating this camera system? Um, that's, that's entirely Dr. Ballard. Um, uh, we were at the end of an uh, expedition last year. Um, let me back up. I think Bob has always uh, really cared about communicating the concept of the deep sea, even with uh, children and, and kids at heart around the world, um, through not only his discoveries, but, but major projects um, like the Jason Project that, that touched millions of kids around the world and, and taught them about the deep sea and and uh, the type of roles that were available for exploration in places around the world. And so the concept behind that is really that um, of immersion, of, of showing people new media, new technologies, um, and using those new technologies to just continue to refine how we can communicate about um, the deep sea. So at the end of last year, he'd come to me and said, you know, because we've been We've been going back and forth with all of these cool immersive camera technology concepts. It's utility even just beyond um, beyond entertainment, but for creating things like real-time visualizations and simulations, etc. cetera. Um, and he said, Jonathan, I want 
to take people into the deep sea and create immersive content. And that, that beyond, beyond additional um, you know, specifications and kind of his, his overall goals, um, that, that was the seed that, that set it off. I want to create immersive content. And I think for any viewer that's going back home now, I'd like to, to close your eyes and just ask yourself, well, what, what is immersive content? Um, I have the honor of being a dad now of two four-year-olds, twins, and uh, the first thing that came to my mind um, was this idea of, of the true renaissance of the shared virtual experience, the shared immersive experience of walking into a whole room projection with your family or a theater that wraps itself around you, um, that you can share that experience with the rest of your family. The VR headset, of course, is, is, is obvious. It's the new technology, it's the shiny thing of the day, but I think that it still has to prove its mettle in terms of widespread adoption. Um, and then there's the idea that uh, elements like video games are also immersive. Um, certainly for certain generations and, and certain personality types, uh, playing games and um, getting into different worlds and experiencing them in a non-linear fashion. Um, is immersion uh, so we kind of took those those kind of three things in mind and um, went to start designing this system um, you know so those three things are needs to be able to project into a large dome um, IMAX Omnimax I took those specifications for Omnimax and uh, some of the big dome theater projection systems like the new one that opened up in, in the Las Vegas sphere this that looks really cool. You've seen that? Yeah. I've seen videos of it, and I want to go to it. It looks cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we took that and said, well, what are the specifications in terms of, like, wraparound and raw pixel density? We designed the system with that. And oh, then we, we asked... Oh, have a goosefish. Uh, yeah, that's fascinating. <laughs> we are the goosefish watch. <laughs> yep. And then we uh, asked ourselves... Um, from the VR aspect, well, how do we do really good VR? As least good as good VR as we can in the, the ocean depths. And that's why those cameras now are side by side. And then we asked ourselves, well, how do we, can we design a system that also does the, the concept of, of video games, of bringing real models to a video gaming environment so we can take what is, what is, what is a very, uh, linear experience of watching a video like a highlight video starts and it stops and as a media producer I tell you what is interesting and you have to watch all five minutes um, imagine sitting in detention okay and the teacher wheels out that TV they don't really do this anymore but they did it and they pop in the theater they pop in the tape and you're gonna learn what's on that tape from start to finish well, a non-linear experience is, is setting a kid loose on an environment that allows them to learn at their own pace and to discover content through um, 3D models. You know, a 3D model takes something that might be two hours long and it condenses it into a physical object that you can explore. And that's why there's now a camera mounted on the bumper bar because it gives enough separation between the first two cameras, which are great for dome theater projection and VR, so that we can simultaneously create 3D models of the world around us. Um, and that's it, that's, that's Triclops. That's, that's the seed was, was Dr. Ballard um, and his continued drive to uh, push new technologies, to take some risks and ask ourselves, can, will this work? Um, and um, to, to try to bring those concepts to, to a wider audience. Yeah, I think that's what's so beautiful about Nautilus is it really is, it's opening up science to the public. So it's not gatekeeping it, it's not keeping it just for your researchers, but anyone can tune in live, watch the dives as we're watching them, make those discoveries with us and feel part of it. Yeah. And then we also have our ship to shore interactions where from the ship we can come into classrooms, library, any connections with people and bring you out here with us. Yeah. All right, just real quick, John, that one. John this is sorry, over. Yeah, um, so we've reached our northern extent here. Roger. Um, if Oof. it sounds like, do you want one more pass as we go back or, or just kind of go into explore mode? It's uh, uh, up to you on the coverage you feel I like. I mean, you if go. you're going that way anyway, sure, we can take one more. 
Okay. okay. But if you're not, then don't worry about it. No, we're going to go back that way. Um, Dan, I was going to suggest as we go along contour here, um, we can, we'll can we move along contour a little bit further, and then we can uh, decide if we're going to be exploring up and down the slope. Um, sure. But as you can see here with these contours, we're kind of just at the start of the wall and want to get a little more into the meat of it. Um, and then, uh, Mike, as we get into that kind of territory, especially when we're on the move, let's keep the wall like at the 20 meter ring. Um, and then we'll have Hercules kind of, uh, so Argus or Atalanta will dictate where Hercules can go just based on those, um, that border. Copy that. So uh, just cause I, the walls are terraced and it'll, they'll open up and then close. And you know, as yeah. we go along, we'll just kind of be safe on the move. That works. Sounds good to me, Renny. Okay, great, Dan, thanks. Uh, Rennie, is this kind of viewpoint right here what I can expect out of the cameras as you're executing this move, or can you no, get closer? No, no, the Hercules can be closer, it just okay. Atalanta is that it's yep. kind of like, well, that's where we want it as far as being on the move. Roger, yep. Yeah. So Simon, um, if you can please keep the band of dark, high contrast material always in the frame on the lower right hand side that you're looking at for the okay. Triclops view. Yeah. I, I can't just look straight at mud, so. <laughs> Roger. Um, yeah, just skimming that up up surface would be fantastic, as close as is reasonable. Copy that. Okay. No problem. Moving up. All right. Earlier, when we were doing our pass, we saw that goosefish. A goosefish is a type of anglerfish. Since we're doing these scans, we can't really stop and do a close zoom in because it'll mess up the models we're trying to create. But Zach, do you want to tell us a little bit about anglerfish? Uh, sure. Yeah, so they're, they are a deep sea species, um, or family I should say. And we've been seeing the, the goosefish primarily. That's been kind of the main main member we've seen. Um, and same species, in fact, as well. I think we've we've maybe seen two or three throughout this whole expedition, but primarily just this one, uh, the one we just observed. Um, yeah, they're they're pretty interesting for the fact that uh, they're kind of ambush predators. They sit and wait, um, and then the the ones we're seeing typically, uh, those are all the the females, and then the males kind of just latch onto them and follow them around. And yeah, it's called so, a parasitic male. So the yeah. males are a lot. Smaller. Yeah, doesn't doesn't sound like a great strategy, but when you're in the deep, you know, you do whatever you need to do, and when you cross that one female, you you hang on for dear life, um, yeah. with the hopes of reproducing. So, yeah, when you're in the deep sea, you, you start being introduced to all these new strategies to become um, successful, um, and successful in terms of biology, meaning you you passed on your genes, passed on your traits, right? So. So um, just for the viewers to explain how weird this is. So the males, when they find a female, they latch on and they'll actually permanently fuse together. So then the male gets stops eating, it gets all its blood, nutrients, and food from the female. And so then the male kind of just provides sperm to the female for reproductive use. It's, yeah. You can have like one anglerfish can have up to 12, 11 or 12 different males. So kind of crazy. Yeah, which is also advantageous for them to keep the, the genetic pool, you know, mixed yeah. up and not just have the single one. And um, There's other organisms on the reef. I mean, in the, in the ocean, I should say, in general, they, they do try to, um, yeah, utilize multiple males to keep that variation there. Uh, it's, it's obviously important to have genetic diversity. Um, so, yeah, this is just one of those strategies and, and pretty unique for them. I think most of the time when people think of anglerfish, they think of the large, scary one with kind of the light bulb on their head, right? Yeah, they but think of Finding Nemo yeah, anglerfish. Yeah, which, which is a fish, um, but not, not the specific species we're speaking of here, so. How's this, Jonathan? This all right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Still a little far, but uh, you'll always hear me say that. And just to clarify, we're not saying that all anglerfish have this parasitic male, but it is a common thing in the angler family. So it happens with, a, a commenter is saying it happens with the black sea devil anglerfish, but 
China cops, angler fish, have the males and females are the same type. So as of everything, there's also lots of diversity. This is one um, common one, though, among angler fish, is using this parasitic male. Okay, I'm going to call my survey complete here as we okay. hop off of um, Argus and so I'm let gonna you guys have the ROV. Sure thing. Thank you. I'm going to move out Atlanta, kind of similar to the strike of this wall, but actually bring a little bit closer um, as we so we're just off the mud a bit. Um, but that might m not mean that might mean we can't explore this bottom tier, but there is that upper tier that we're now starting to see. Um, so I'm going to move. Uh, I think 190 um, is the strike. So. Yeah, I'll move at 200, and we'll start with a 30 meter move and kind of see as we move along what speed okay. we want to be going. At this kind of depth? Is it? Uh, what a, so you're, you can do whatever keeps, I'll just keep, uh, we'll keep Ad our Atalanta s safe and whatever you can do is, uh, yeah, I mean, do you want to as the tiers go. Uh, close to the seafloor or at this upper level? That's oh yeah, um, it might change as we go, so we'll yeah. see. Thank you, Rennie, for keeping me safe. You're welcome, Mike. <laughs> yep. Bridge That's now. rock. Rock solid Can we piloting. Step three zero meters bearing two zero zero. Thank you, Martina. Okay, so we're gonna get out of the Norbit zone, out of the Norbit map. Um, gotcha. So Dan. Um, I think from this from this point on, I'm only really interested in uh, extraordinary either uh, columnar basalt or high density corals that are hanging off dramatically off of something like this using the water column for, for structure. Um, I'm going to keep the photogrammetry just going because I can. Um, and so if we can just keep uh, maintain this kind of standoff distance where we can clearly see the rock as so. close as um, they're willing and as fast as they're willing. That's good. Okay, we're just exploring until we find something. Exploring until we find amazing yep. things. Preferably an entire whale. <laughs> whale fall, you know, anything like whale that. Whale fall stuck to the side of a cliff? Oh, oh yeah. That'd no. be a new one. Just Gravity hanging is, by a fluke. Gravity has uh, no meaning. Yeah. 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 Um, I'd take a shipwreck. Okay. So uh, any, a banana cool. shaped submarine. Submarine? A banana shaped one? Yeah. No, yeah. Okay. <laughs> did, did we pass by the submarine? No, that was it was not a submarine. <laughs> to be clear. It was a submarine. <laughs> no. Was it yellow? <laughs> it was yellow. It was in the yeah, in the graphic that we uh or the, the color ramp we had chosen. If anyone here has a chance to hang Ships out with on the move, a, uh, has not moved yet. A mapper. Um, I immediately saw a submarine and Renny just laughed That's at me, uh, which kinda hurt my feelings. <laughs> So we were doing our I think it was, scan. You didn't just say submarine, it's because you offered to bet me a dollar and, and offered your hand <laughs> as a handshake. <laughs> That's why I was laughing. I would like to point it out, was, though, it was that your confidence in the submarine. He, he, he didn't have enough confidence to take the dollar. <laughs> oh. No, it so was like there was not true at all. That's not true at all. I was, I was busy describing to you why you didn't want to take this bet. It, it is true. I was trying to save you a dollar. As the Norbit scan continued, it did reveal that, in fact, it was shaped like a banana and yeah. approximately 500 meters long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not saying there wasn't some sort of top secret banana sub developed by the Japanese during World War II. You never know. <laughs> you know, I always think of bananas and Japanese together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Fair. I mean, it had a conning tower and everything and when it started. Yeah, you were describing elements of it that were not there. They were there. <laughs> they were just rocks. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? So the sea floor's dropped off quite yeah. substantially here. So. It appears that way. So uh, Atalanta still hasn't moved yet, um, but the ship has started, so it's. Yeah. I think it might just start to move. Um, yeah, whatever is in your scope vertically as we move along, um, we'll just keep Atalanta at that 20 meter off as a, at a maximum, or at a minimum, rather. Roger that. I'll keep resetting this because it's misbehaving, and, and eventually I'll give up. Did anyone see a shark on the previous dives? I don't believe so, but no. I... 
Jonathan, do you know, did anyone see a shark on the earlier one? A baby shark? Toot, 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 toot. <laughs> no, oh. um, I don't believe so. It sounds like they're only interested when we bring treats. Yeah, the <laughs> in the previous lives. dive report, it said it said that sharks are seen here, but they used a bait bag, so. What's the bright white dot on the left-hand side of Zeus? Right on the left-hand edge there? Yeah, the left-hand edge is super bright. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's a penny. Go and have a look. Phos phosphorus. Ooh. Ooh. A little star. It's a sea star. Oh. Look at that. It. Give you a little bit more tether. Roger. Oh, it's the smallest sea star. Just starting out as little sea star life. My students have acne patches that are stars, and it took me forever to figure out why students were going around with stars stuck all over their face. Uh -huh. And I thought it was just a fad of putting star stickers on your face, but apparently acne patches are now bright neon stars. Oh. Here I walked around fully shrouded. That ship moves complete. Um, Atlantis still probably only started the first quarter of that move. Roger. Jonathan, the chat is not happy with you saying the baby shark do 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 do. Yeah, song. everyone's just gonna have to deal with that. I have yeah. four year olds, and if I have to deal with it, then you do too. <laughs> oh, there's another sea star. I'll go ahead and call in another move. Yeah. Bridge now. I Step do. three zero meters, bearing two zero zero. Thank you. I like that line of interesting geology that we're seeing right there. Yeah, yeah it's interesting. Uh, this seems to be what we saw at the base when we on our first dive at the columnar basalt site. There was kind of this structure more like down lower at the base. Yeah. And then the, the columns we were seeing. So I'm curious if that would correlate with. Um, Kind of, we we weren't far from here, so I wonder if if you were to follow this this structure along, if it's all associated with the same layer, and then the, the next layer was cooled in a different way, and et cetera, et cetera. It's a great Argus or Atalanta shot there. not too up to cut oh yeah i don't know much about that one coming back up ernie just Roger. to give it a little bit of space yeah yeah Roger. so we might have to just uh wait till we have a little slack in the tether and right. go go along as is there you probably keep moving just a bit you have some some slack in your tether yeah okay yeah, seven meter delta we're still, it looks like, kind of still at the base of this, so we can um, zigzag up as we go. But, like I said, this is kind of like the the foot of it, and we're trying to get to the yeah, middle of the wall. My altitude's reading 43 meters. So. Yeah, so yeah, we're not at the base of it at all, are we? <laughs> no, <Nope. laughs> yeah, I still got 40. Uh, we can like see, actually, shelf. in okay. orbit, yeah, we see what we got yeah. there. Um, it, it, quite, it dips down to, to your aft quite a bit. It does, yeah. yeah. Bubble cam in the lower left here. You got sheer cliff. Yeah, it's pretty sheer on that. Well, on that camera view. It's pretty. Spin around and look, and it's yeah, it's pretty sheer. So I think I'll be bringing you a bit closer to that wall, like in general, um, as we kind of get more into the wall. I'm not going to follow the base, so you'll find, Mike, that you can't really hold there for too long as we head into yeah. that. Yeah. All good, though. Come on. It's pretty slow moving at the moment.
Mike, are you able to tell our viewers why do we use the two ROV system and what's the benefit to this using these? So with this um, two ROV system, obviously we have Atalanta is connected directly through the uh, low tested cable, the heavy lift cable that comes straight down. So that's in a direct contact with the ship. So any movements that the ship's stern makes up and down um, get translated subsea. And then between Atalanta and Hercules, we have a soft tether. So it allows us um, kind of like a heave compensation system where you can see uh, Atalanta is moving up and down with the wave action, but Hercules is pretty steady. It gives us that little bit of separation. We've got a 30 meter soft tether between Atalanta and Hercules. So that gives us a, a nice range of movement that we can do, you know, unencumbered without ship moves and without any kind of disturbance from the sea above. It also provides a nice little camera platform that we can get an overview of Hercules, which is pretty rare and special in the in the ROV world to be able to watch yourself flying around. It gives us a great situational awareness and also provides extra lighting for uh, some of the cinematic effects we've been trying this trip. Yeah, so if you look on satellite V2, that's Atalanta's view, and you can see that soft, uh, that tether, you can see how there's some slack in there, so it's not pulling on Hercules. So without that, if you're watching the video from Hercules, you'd probably get seasick from watching it. Yeah, and I'll add that um, we've had really great weather. I mean, um, looking at some of our outside cameras and super gentle, uh, and you're still seeing a bit of movement there in Atalanta when we have rough weather which uh, that's still in our operational window I mean that thing will be really uh, you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to look at that Atalanta cam for too long and it gets, it's pretty nauseating so that's the kind of motion that we're isolating and you can see Hercules video is really smooth smoothly able to like kind of drive around yeah it's harder to get much flatter sea conditions than this yeah So Dave just put up on satellite feed three, the view of the deck. So viewers, if you want to see what the ocean sea state is, you can look at satellite feed three and see how nice and calm it is for us. I'm going to add one more move there. Okay. Um, just keep continuing along till we see anything. Um, slightly up the wall. Bridge nav. Uh, one more step. Two, uh, sorry, three zero meters bearing two zero zero. Thanks. And then now our satellite feed three is showing our deck frog. Oh, deck frog. Happy face, deck frog. <laughs> Although his smile's a little crooked right now. He's, it's the sun's getting to him. He might need <laughs> to get hydrated. This, uh, this good weather is also allowing us to be a little more lenient with our um, our proximity of uh, Atalanta to these walls. Um, when it's when there's a lot more heave, we have to be a little more cautious um, and have a bigger standoff distance. Just because that up and down motion, um, you know, can be make or break uh, with your heaving in, in in and out. And as you move along, it's kind of bouncing along. Zach, you've been involved a lot with the making of these 3D models. Can you talk to us a little bit about how do you go from taking this footage, this video footage, and making it into a model? So the first part is, uh, which is, is the very heavily automated part at this point, is uh, pulling, the, pulling all the footage from the 